and it, I don't know if it sounds right or not, we try to get the girls, definitely they have to be Yatim, but the ones who the committee feels are the brightest one because we are not giving them roti kapada, not food and shelter. Mm -hmm. We are after honoring the orphans, end product of that is we are rebuilding peaceful, peace loving leaders of tomorrow, which in turn will be peaceful Pakistan, the best exemplary Pakistan that no one has seen anywhere in the world. And I know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me for many years, my this vision, my this mission will also come true from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, we started out with only four girls. With the four girls. We only started with four, four girls and now we have 40. We have 40. We have room uh, in this particular place, we have room for 60. Uh, we have decided that we will not take any more this year because uh, we will take more next school year. So they can go immediately and they all go to private school. But this process will not start stop here. I am very confident and I'm very that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there will be Sabah homes in Karachi, Multan, Lahore, Faisalabad and other places because people just don't know what our mission and vision is. Yeah. Once they find out, I think this is going to spread like a wildfire, wildfire not only from Muslims but non-Muslims as well. I must, I must mention one thing. There are so many Allah's blessings. I can never count. It is just unbelievable. For earthquake last year, one organization, one person, Samnani Foundation, whom I do not even know, I've never even met, they donated us 14 million dollars worth of antibiotics, which is desperately needed for the earthquake, for the flood victims. And we immediately formed of knowing my having my business background and uh, all the experience I did not want to see well we got the medicine we'll give it to them we invited people throughout Pakistan from all the provinces and we asked them we have this received this medicine we want to make sure it gets to the proper people every single bottle every single pill what should we do so this is not sold. It's a very expensive medicine. So it is not sold. So we had multiple meetings and we came up with the rules and we made a committee. We came up with the rules and regulations. This is how we follow. This is how we, in other words, the organization has to be registered. They have to have a good track record. They have to be working in a flood area. And then we have the right to monitor. We have the right to go audit, audit. And the net result was, we just listen to the remotest places in Pakistan, all provinces, including Balochistan. It's Allah's blessing. And last year also another organization uh, donated us uh, two containers full of blankets, 100% wool blankets, which we distributed throughout the uh, flood areas. What was the mindset, thought behind selecting only girls? Do you think that in our society, the girls are very much deprived and what, what do you think? Well, there are two reasons. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the woman on a pedestal. In Islamic countries, Islamic culture, including Pakistan, we have put the woman very far behind. So I believe one reason we want to make sure that they are giving the best that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give the woman. The second, most important part, Rasul Pak said, if you educate a man, you educate one person. But when you educate a woman, you educate the entire family and many, many families from there. So that was the main uh, motivation of starting 
the girls only. Well, let me tell you something. We all know girls actually have, in many cases, are smarter than men. They can do better than men. And if you look at the li- life of the Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Sallam, Sahaba Kram, in, in those days, so I think the, we educate these girls and then like I said, we will also have the boys section very soon because some men, like here for right in Pakistan, will come say, Lo, open this, Mr. Aslam, open this for my mother or uh, my dad or whatever. Because the model is so unique. You know, we have visitors come in here with tears of happiness in their eyes when they go through this. So it's a very unique Saba homes that you have ever imagined. There's nothing like this anywhere in the world. It's, when we went through some of uh, the, the research in Pakistan, I means also uh, that's another way, means understanding of the people that prefer means the girls because uh, in our own society, uh, I mean especially at home also at family even in general family and then mother is there, father is there, all there. Even the importance is given to uh, to, to to son. And if a, uh, if a home, there is no father, mother, and uh, someone is living, lady or the girl living with the other families, then that would be a very much trouble. And been, was such kind of means uh, understanding in your mind when yeah, that their committee went, to, went for girls first time? Well, I think as I said for the girl, first of all, let me tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first blessed us with the two daughters. And typically, as you just rightly so now said, most people wish and they desire they had boys. Not even one day in my life I ever thought I was, I'm so happy Almighty God has blessed me with two daughters who are like a jewel, living, born and raised in America. When you look at their lives, socially, education, everything else, my friends in America envy them. They respect them, they love them, they say, come, you know, these are most wonderful family. So I say, Allah blessed me with the two daughters. And as you know, this is Sulaypa Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam's hadith, that everyone who has two daughters, anyone who has uh, three daughters, I think he said, and later on some people have said too, that, uh, you know, if he raise them the Islamic way, uh, I guarantee he will go to heaven. So I say, I'm a blessed man, and it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, and it's the same reason for the Sabah homes. So, uh, also tell us that means the girls, they're getting education, uh, means what kind of education you're providing? Are they going to go to private schools or what? And, and the highest level, in which level the, the girls are now? Okay, they are, going, they, are, they are going to private school, and uh, my message to all of our daughters is that you want to be best in class. You want to be the monitor in class. You want to come first in class. And I said, in order for you to do that, I will give you the tools. So when they come home, so they go to private school in Bahia town, a, one of the top quality schools as equal to as any other school, any other top quality school in Pakistan. When they come home, we have hired teachers and they teach them in the evening to make sure they get their homework done properly so they, they are top of the class and with Allah's blessing many of them are and have been on top of the class. Uh, we'll, uh, again once again we'll uh, connect this uh, from where we actually <laughs> stopped. Uh, please uh, also share with our readers and audience that uh, in working in Pakistani context especially uh, for the girls and what kind of problem means uh, an individual or organization can face? Well, first of all, I think in my life I have always said and this is the same true here it's not difficulties, it's not problems is challenges and opportunities. I look at each one of them as a challenge, as an opportunity. If it cannot be done, I can do it. 
I think there's so much information in here. I think people need to go to the website, which is www.sabartas.org, and they can get more information. Because here is 46 years of history, and we are trying to put it in, uh, you know, a few minutes. But uh, this is such a long, wonderful history. So just to answer your question, though, uh, even though there are many people call it difficulties and problems in Pakistan, Bijli ka hai, dusra hai, and other things. But every time any one of these things come, I said, here's another challenge for Sagir Aslam. I said, my father called me, my father named me Bahadur. <coughs> and my father was not educated. But he said, Sagir, you can do it, nobody else can do it. Wow. And I just put that, so I just practice on that. And this is the same thing for the girls, even though we have you have difficulty carrying huh? for 10 years we didn't have a gas here even though the gas was very close to us the cooking gas but jab bhi unse kehte the gas laga to kehte daftar mein aake baat karo na humse to hum we, 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 we lived on some we, gizar, cylinder se humne gazara kiya 10 saal maine kaha hum wo daftar mein aane wala kaam nahi kar sakte to hum uske bagair lakdiyon se bula puka lenge sir sir problem i mean that uh, the cultural, social, religious, that because as a Western countries or other the, the thought of schools, they're saying that there are cultural issues, there are religious issues, especially working in girls, but you are doing a tremendous job and then not only educating but bringing from home and keeping here and then the way you are thinking, that for long, long uh, missed target you have. See, there, there are not cultural issues, there are not religious issues. Again, I look at them, I look at the life of the Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I just say, when these girls, uh, some of them originally, when we started this thing, 